friends, it's Nia. Welcome to Life with Nia. Today we are closing out our February 2022 budget. I have literally procrastinated on this video and taking care of this budget all weekend. But it is done and I feel good about that because there's nothing better than rolling into a new month with the previous month done and your new month set up and ready to go. So that is a good thing. So today I'm going to share um, where we're at on goals, income, expenses, sinking funds, cash, envelopes, savings, challenges, um, business expenses, some cash envelope rollover, and um, we'll flip through the uh budget planner so that you can see where I've updated trackers and whatnot. And then I'll also talk about more comprehensively what has happened with PD and the money that was spent on that. So starting with goals, um, for this month, I have some things that are like goals and then I have some things that are like things to do. So we'll go over both of those. Um, had a goal this month of, let me just adjust this without dropping the whole thing. Had a goal this month of no credit card. That didn't happen. We'll talk more about it as we go. Had a goal. I actually said I was going to highlight these things that I didn't do, but I don't have a highlighter. Let's use one of these. Tombow. Tombow brush pen. Um, save 600. I actually saved... 715 but it was 765 and we'll talk about that um paid taxes i paid all kinds of crazy taxes and we'll talk about that track expenses is done tax prep is um done um etsy sales of 3k did not happen um and as i was looking back at last year i probably should have known that that was not going to happen um we're slightly under where we were last year at about 1300 i think it was close to 15 um last year in february so coming into the new year is a struggle coming off of like all the holiday sales and stuff so um pay off 2000 in debt that did not happen and you know what i was really sitting here trying to figure out like what is wrong in this scenario. I don't know why I had 2000. I went and looked back at like last year and my goal was typically 1000 to 1200. I think I was looking at like the total amount that I pay, which can be in excess of 2000 a lot of months, but with interest and um, things, it doesn't make a $2,000 dent in the debt. So I'm going to revise that for next month and going forward um, to something more realistic because it would be really difficult for me to do 2000 to actually see a $2,000 decrease in what is owed. Um, and then sec separate and aside from that, I also accumulated some new debt. And so there's that. Um, Shopify is, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to put a no because Although I'm working on it, it's not where I need it to be. Um, meet my savings challenge goal. That worked. And then I wanted to earn 100 for YouTube. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. Plus 100 subscribers. Um, and it doesn't look like that is going to happen either. So that's where we're at on um, the goals. I had some things I also wanted to do this month. Um, and... Um, so having Shopify done, it's not done. It's about three quarters of the way done. I wanted to get my five year plan done. It is done with the exception of, I want to print out some pictures for the vision board with my photo printer. Um, I wanted to have like five new dolls and I can't even, I don't even know how many new ones I have that I can think of in my head one, but I know that there's more than one, but I'm not. I don't want to count the ones that are going to end up like in the sesh box or um, the sticker club because it's I'm just like thinking new releases. Um, so I'm gonna leave that blank for now. Same thing with weeklies. I think I had I ended up with two, but I have several that are not listed. Um, I did two, I think three new florals. So I wanted to do five. Um, <laughs> 
the D stash that is just like eternally never happening did not happen again this month. Um, and then I did work on some new affirmations and quotes, but I'm probably going to introduce them in either the planner slash box or the sticker club before they're released out to everyone. Um, I have not been reading 15 minutes daily, but I have been reading off and on. And when I do, it's typically for more than 15 minutes. Um, I did start my planner sesh prep. Um, I, I'm actually in a really good place. I just need to finish the stickers and I'm waiting for two things. Well, no, I'm waiting for about five things to arrive. Um, so I guess we're kind of on track with that. I don't know exactly what the release date is going to be, but I'm thinking sometime around the middle of March, maybe the 17th, 18th, somewhere around there. Um, I did get my um, EIN name changed. Um, I had one back like 15 years ago when I had a childcare business and you can only have one per lifetime, but you can change the name on it. So I was able to do that. Um, and I got a new font that I'm working on and you are seeing those um, go up on the site. So this is just a little tracker that I made for myself. Um, so income, let's talk about income. We're going to come back to that book in a bit. So for this month for income, my projection was um, $7,275, which was largely um, in anticipation of this number for Etsy each week, 525. Now this is a revenue number um, after Etsy takes out their fees and shipping costs. Um, I then t drill down further on that and set aside a certain amount for taxes and to put back into the business to pay for things and then I pay myself an amount. So as an example, um, the first week it was actually 391. Um, but I only paid myself 170 because there was money set aside for taxes and for business expenses. So um, these were significantly lower than what I projected each week. And in part, that's due to my own poor planning. Um, nothing came in for YouTube this month because I did not meet the threshold. Petey's here, but he's not quite saying hi. Um... So, because of primarily the shortfall here, um, what actually came in was sixty three sixty three instead of seventy two seventy five. However, I had inflow of income from various sinking funds. Um, so seven hundred and ninety was taken out of my home sinking fund to cover the cost for PD. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, 140 was um, from my bulk shopping because I went to Costco and the butcher. 330 came from um, my home fund for um, new printer and ink. Um, actually, it came from my 250 of it came from my business sinking fund. And the rest came from the home sinking fund. Then another 120 I took from my home sinking fund to cover Amazon Prime for the year before the price went up. And then I took 60 from my rainy day fund and 200 from Saveopoly and um, paid off two debts. Um, so that, because of that inflow of income, which it was the inflow of income that went back out, um, the total income total money coming in for the month was 93.27. All right. So, um, that was a total of $2,964. Oh, wait, I missed one taxes, 1069 and 255. So total of 2964. Um, Pulled from sinking funds and back out to pay for something or another. So for expenses, <clears throat> um, for the most part, everything is normal. I have not paid my gas and electric bill. I will do that on the first on payday. Um, 
just because that's what I'm doing. Um, I did pay off my platinum card and I paid off this loan. And that was money that I just t pulled from um, the home sinking fund. So the 260 went towards these two debts. Um, expenses. Okay, so let's talk about PD. PD was an expense this month. So I've kind of shared a little bit of what um, it has been going on with him, but not in detail. So I'm going to share in further detail. So he went to the, the vet in January, mid-January, and um, we did like the emergency vet um, because he was just like the, the seizures were getting worse. So he went in. It's like it could be um, an issue with his heart. It could be neurological. We're not really sure what, what's causing it. He does have a heart murmur, um, but that is likely genetic. It may have gotten worse over time. Um, he's also got a little bit of a cough that could be due to, well, that is due to the, he's got an enlarged heart also. So it's partially in, due to the enlarged heart, like messing with his trachea. Um, he's 15 y'all. So it's just some of the stuff happens. Um, so he had some blood work done, um, got sent home you know, continue to monitor him. We're going to set up an appointment with a cardiologist, but there is like to see a neurologist or a cardiologist, it's like several weeks. So, um, it was three weeks before we would see the cardiologist. I continued to keep track of his seizures. They were becoming more frequent to the point where I was really contemplating like what is best for him and maybe just putting him down is the best thing for him. Um, so he saw the cardiologist on February 2nd. That visit was um, $460, which included medication, which was $85 at the vet. And um, he basically has a left ventricle heart murmur, which she saw, the vet saw um, initially, um, and severe pulmonary hypertension. Um, he's not getting enough oxygen, which they thought was what was causing the seizure. So, um, kind of makes sense because if he would get a little too active, that would kind of trigger one. But then they were like, his heart doesn't match. He had an echocardiogram. His heart wasn't matching as far as looking as damaged as what they were seeing. So, um, they put him on three types of medication. I was able to get those at two of them at Costco. So I paid 85 for the one at the vet. Then I got two at Costco. If you're not familiar with GoodRx, look up GoodRx. It's completely free. Um, and you can get coupons for medication. So the, the medication that he's on, the one that I got from the vet is a pet medicine. The two that I got from Costco are actually people medicine. And um, one of them from Costco is $11.29. Good RX would have been seven dollars and twenty four cents. Costco was four ninety nine. Um, then the other one is thirty nine ninety five. Good RX has it for fourteen ninety nine. Costco has it for thirteen ninety nine. So Costco will honor Good RX, but if their price is cheaper, then you can go that route. So he um, on the second after seeing the cardiologist. He started taking these three medications. He's not had a seizure since. He's back to normal. He's back to getting in trouble. He's back to getting into stuff. He's back to doing too much. My dog is back. So that's all good. We went back after two weeks for a follow-up on the 16th. That was another $300. And then she wanted him to try um, another medication for his liver, which um, he had blood work done again. And it's like, well, this could be just because he's in, this is a stressful situation. Um, you know, you can try it or not try it. The thing about this one is he can't take, he has to take it on an empty stomach and he can't have food with it and he doesn't like it. So he takes his other three very willingly. The, the pet one is like a treat. So he loves it. This one is a fight and fighting him to take something exacerbates the issue. So 
once this one is done, we're going to be done with it. We're not going to do it anymore. Um, but all in total, PD this month was um, $790. So there you have it. There's my, my PD update. He's doing very, very well. Um, we go back in May or June to see the cardiologist again and... Um, Hopefully, you know, won't need to do anything else, but the medication he will be on for the rest of his life. So, um, I don't know how much the vet medicine is at Costco because I filled it through the vet when we just not knowing. Um, so hopefully it'll be way less expensive at Costco than the $85 that I'm not, I'm not counting on it to be $85. It's not in my budget. Um, and it's like, why is the vet so expensive? I guess, you know, like, if you were my people, if they, if it was my, my, my child, you'd have insurance. So there's that. But I just want to be like, you fixed them. We don't need to see you anymore because you cost too much. Um, but anyway, so that is where we're at on that. Sinking funds. Um, okay, so I'm going to do a video. Um probably the middle of the month on an update to my sinking funds because some of them I just don't even have the numbers for because I've been moving a lot of money around and pulling money out to cover things. Um, so like I said, 2964 came out of sinking funds. I'm very, 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 very eternally grateful that I have sinking funds in place and I could pull that money from those things because there's no way I would have been able to cash flow it. So um, 2964 this month, 2,964 came from sinking funds to cover various things. Um, and you know, some of those things I just would have not done. I would have not paid off those two debts. I would have not, um, went shopping at Costco. Um, I would have not bought Amazon Prime for the year. I don't know what I would have done as far as taking care of my animal. Um, but you know, I didn't have to make that choice. So I'm grateful for that. Um, for, so I'm going to do the, the video mid month once I can figure out where I'm at on all these things. Part of the issue is having money in different places makes it a little bit harder to track. Um, I do know there's 302 in my car fund, 555 in my vacation fund, 270 in my health fund, 134 in my bulk shopping fund, 230 in PD's fund, um, 242 in my home fund. I have nothing left in my business fund because I liquidated it to purchase the printer. Printers, actually, because I, I did get two. Um, 242 in Christmas, 100 in Black Friday. I have 88 in self care, and that is not right. We just erase and figure it out later. That's why I'm going to do a video <laughs> separately on sinking funds because I don't know what it is. Um, 106 in clothing, zero in Sam's Club membership, 115 in the P.O. box, zero in rainy day because I used it, 162 in the budget mom for 2022. Um, I need to look, I need to just save Opoly is one that I need to look because I did take 200 from that. 62 in the penny challenge, 5606 in the zero out challenge, and 100 in the birthday fund. I'm also going to get, um, I used a friend's membership for Costco, so I'm going to get my own Costco membership, but I'm going to go ahead and just cash flow that. Um, and, uh, that is that. So let's talk about debt. So I just shared with y'all that, um, the 2000 was not a realistic expectation considering that interest in different things. So this month, um, we started with 32, 32952, 32952. We ended with 32383, which is a reduction by $569. It would have been a lot more, but, um, I did buy some things, um, on credit. So I spent about a thousand dollars, um, yeah, I spent about a thousand dollars this month on a credit card or 
more than one. Um, no, I would say I spent about 800 because 200 of it I was like after pay. I had after pay down to $60. We're at 200 which is not horrible, but <sighs> after pay. Anyway, um, a lot of that is uh, business expenses. This month I've spent um, about close to $1,400 on business expenses, and we'll go through those momentarily. Um, so our debt was only reduced by five sixty nine, which is, um, it, you know, if I hadn't spent the money on the credit card, um, for those business expenses, then it probably would have been closer to 1500 that was paid down this month. Um, I still think 2000 is a stretch though. So, um, we're going to go down for March to a thousand and see how we do with that. So that is debt for our savings challenges this month. Um, we saved a total of $765 and 49 cents. And, um, that was the goal was 600. So that was, um, $45 for, the budget mom savings challenge which is this one here so I ended up scrapping this in part but we still managed to save $45 I saved $68 to the 52 week savings challenge $466 to my emergency fund um, using the hundred envelope so pulling the numbers um, 25 to my vacation fund which was $5 bills and um, 114 from Saveopoly, 24 for the Penny Challenge, and $23.49 to the Zero Out Challenge for a total of $765.49. I also saved $325 for taxes, $50 for my car, $50 for PD, $20 for health, $50 for business, $50 for Black Friday, $50 for my birthday, and $10 for P.O. Box. Um... But those are more of like long-term sinking funds. And like I said, I pulled out $29.64 this month. So here we are. So for business expenses, um, I, to give you like an idea, I spent $290 on one printer, $80 on another printer. I've spent $120 to go ahead and pay for Canva for the year, $128 to pay for Amazon Prime for the year. Um... I spent $100 on art this month, um, which just turned into stickers. I've spent nearly $300 on planner sesh box stuff. I bought $500 of my mailers, which is $127. Um, Instant ink was $53.86, but it should go down like to about $20 for at least the next six months, unless I go over, because um, I went to this plan, and then I get six months free with the new printer. Um, so with tax, it's about $20 on that plan. And then, um, one new thing that was added this month is Shopify. So that's $29 I'm paying for a website I can't even use. So that is motivating to get me to get it together so that it's useful. Um, and I still need sticker paper. I will probably need to buy sticker paper in March and that's about $450. So I'm trying to spread it out a little bit. Um, so that's where we're at on business expenses. Let's talk about our cash envelopes and what's left in them. So, um, I don't have anything left in groceries. I don't have anything left in dining out. In the household. These are expired but some new ones came yesterday. Okay, so in household, we have $3 left. And then in gas, we have 60. I'm gonna leave the 60 in gas because gas is a bazillion dollars a gallon. And that's gonna get rolled over. And then the $3 that I have um, from my household fund, I'm going to put into my hundred envelope 
one of these envelopes. Um, so, because I'm doing the 100 envelope challenge, but I'm doing it electronically, so I still wanted to be able to use the envelope, so I'm going to put $3 in here. I'm not really tracking it, so um, I want to just sort of be surprised at the end of the month with coming, or not the end of the month, but the end of the year, coming to look at these and see what did I save um, through just like miscellaneous stuff and rollovers. So, um, oh, I did write on there what the amount is, so I'm going to do that with this one. Like, did I write on the envelope? I couldn't remember. So I am going to write what I put in the envelope. And so that, I mean, kind of makes it easy for me. I could easily come through here and look at them and count and see how much money is there. Um, but I'm really not doing that. I'm trying to wait till the end of the year and see. And if I have another month like this last month, I might be pilfering from it. I don't think it was pilfering because I paid off two debts. I paid off two cards and so that's a good thing but it was a struggle to convince myself to do that um okay last thing is I'm just gonna flip through my book and show you what's updated here so you see um we're at 5606 for the zero out challenge and um, I'm going to keep all my little post-it notes and things because they help me remember what happened um, in February. And um, I didn't write business expenses down on here, but I have them in my Budget Mom Budget by Paycheck workbook. So in the back of my planner, um, I just sort of check in with my goals and the things that I want to do. Um, I made a note to myself that I overestimated my income for the year because I did not consider that I was going to max out on my salary. So I was should have gotten a raise. Um, I should see it my next paycheck. I thought it was going to be 5%. It's maybe 2% because I'm maxed out. Um, which means that this number is actually going to ultimately end up being lower. So, figure that out, um, going through here and just sort of checking in. And then the other thing that um, I updated was on my business budget, um, I had estimated for this year $144 for Silhouette. It's actually going to be zero because I paid for the whole year in December. And then um, Canva, I estimated $155. It's $132.98 because I paid for the whole year this month. Um, printer, I had estimated spending $200 on a printer this year. I spent $370. And actually, it's that should be $450 um, because I, I don't know why I feel like I, for, I forgot that I've got to, maybe because one of is, is identical to the one I had, but I spent $4.50 already on printers, so there's that. Um, for my sinking funds, I'm pretty much on track with what I was planning to do with those. Like I said, I'm going to do a sinking fund check-in video. Um, for my savings challenges this month, we saved $7.65 and 49 cents. And um, this is where I'm tracking total savings, not including sinking funds. Um, I've got my 52-week challenge tracker updated. And, okay, so here is the thing for me, rainy day fun. Does anybody else like this? This is what I don't like about trackers. I pulled the money. I had $60 in my rainy day fund. I pulled it out and I paid off a debt. So now this 50 that I've got colored in is not actually true because the money is not there anymore. I think that I'm more bothered by that 
than actually spending the money. But I think that's the reason why I don't want to spend the money because I don't want my tracker messed up. I know that that sounds really ridiculous, but that is truly how I feel about that situation. Does anybody else have that type of sentiment about those types of things? If so, comment down below and let me know. Um, but I just I was like, oh, now I gotta put the money back because my tracker is messed up. Just a mess, y'all. Just a mess. Okay, I got my vacation um, up to date with the 550, so that's colored in. Actually, it's not colored in all the way because I can't find the purple pencil. Um, retirement tracker for this year is up to date. And um, I have not colored in the debt. I'll do that at the on March 1st when I set up my March, finish setting up the March budget. But, um... It's just going to go down like half a thing there. Um, then I updated these trackers. So this one's for car. Um, this one is for a loan. Got a Kohl's card. We've got our Mac computer. Um, Navy Federal. And... Quicksilver, I didn't even fill this in because I put more money on it. This is the one I paid off. So I just stuck a sticky on there that it's paid off. Um, PayPal. And then um, our net worth tracker that we're really not doing anything with. Rainy Day Fund. I did account for the 60 I pulled out here on this tracker. And then Penny Savings Challenge. And then this is my Budget Mom savings challenge so for February we save $45 and Saveopoly I accounted for the 200 I pulled out of there and $5 bills we've saved $55 this year 52 week challenge we saved 191 this year self-care we saved 88 this year and then this last one is my hundred envelope challenge and this also includes the numbers that I pulled on Friday that will be um, deposited on March 1st which is payday so that is um, my updated budget workbook um, and that is the end of my February budget we are closed out and ready to roll into March. I am by no means a financial whiz, analyst, guru. I'm just sharing with you what I'm doing. So um, seek guidance from someone who is certified to do that if you have those types of questions. But if you have questions about my budget or um, comments, suggestions, feedback, I'd be more than happy to um, engage with you in that discussion. Feel free to comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time for um, cash envelope stepping for March. I'll see you later. Bye.